In the telling of the history of retailing in Western Canada, David Spencer's name occupies a place of prominence. A man who pioneered the concept of an all-purpose department store with an emphasis on quality goods and customer service. Although he died nearly a century ago, and his stores are no more, Spencer left a legacy that is still evident today, a legacy that continues to inspire an entire industry. His mantra through the stores was always quality and value, which is a great thing to have in any business, but I think was quite unusual at the time. He wasn't bringing in the cheapest products. He was bringing in products that he knew the men and women of Victoria and later the rest of the province needed and would add value to their lives. David Spencer was raised on a farm in Wales, and by his mid-teens he'd already served an apprenticeship in the dry goods business. But he was looking for greater challenges, and as a young man he heard thrilling stories about fortunes to be made on Canada's west coast. In his mid-twenties, in search of adventure, and in fact in search of gold, he uh, sailed across the ocean to uh, follow his, his dreams of finding the caribou, uh, the Klondike, the caribou gold rush. Sailed across the ocean to Panama, there was no canal, so he had to take the rail across and then the boat up to Victoria. And I believe he was 25 when he arrived in Victoria, and when he did, the gold rush was over. For a brief spell, he was a bookseller on downtown Victoria's Government Street, followed by a partnership in a dry goods business. It wasn't until 1879 that his life's work really got underway, with a dry goods and carpet warehouse, selling selected goods from Europe and the United States. He knew exactly what his customers wanted and how to supply it. By the late 1890s, business was booming and he opened a second store in Nanaimo. Meanwhile, Spencer was active in the Methodist Church, and it was there, while teaching Sunday school, that he met his wife Emma, a missionary. They would have eight daughters and five sons, the makings of a retail dynasty. All five of his sons followed him into the business and apparently he was extremely proud that that had happened. I think the, the blending of his religious beliefs and his work life, uh, it, was, it, was, it was more than a blending, it was a marriage. He was a very religious man, David was, and uh, he uh, practically built the Methodist Church in Victoria. But he was also a shrewd entrepreneur the keen sense of what a business needed to grow. Spencer embodied that curious Victorian-era mix of conservatism and forward thinking. And it struck me that he was a bit ahead of his time in terms of uh, vertical integration. Uh, he, uh, he had built these stores, but he also, in, in, the, in the course of building the network of stores, he uh, established a creamery to provide product for the stores. He had an abattoir for the meats. He had orchards in the interior. He established a buying office in London. He didn't just have a store. He was beginning to grow an empire of all the pieces you needed to have the store be successful. Early in the 20th century, Vancouver replaced Victoria as the commercial heart of BC, and Spencer bought a property on Hastings Street. Within a few years, that store expanded to 140,000 square feet and soon earned a reputation as the greatest retail store west of the Rockies. Almost single-handedly, Spencer had put his stamp on big store retailing in British Columbia. Meanwhile, he remained true to his belief that a businessman owed a debt to his community. He contributed a lot uh, financially, but also by way of his time. Uh, reading about what he had done, I was quite shocked for a man who ran a business as broad and as wide-ranging as his, and also had raising, together with a wife, of course, 13 children. And he was heavily involved in church activities. He was an alderman in Victoria. He was uh, involved in uh, raising money for hospitals. It doesn't seem like a cause went by that he wasn't involved in as a prominent citizen of the day. He, I don't think he knew how to say no. Spencer and his sons also knew a thing or two about marketing. A much anticipated annual event in Vancouver was Spencer's Toy Parade, shown here in an amateur film shot in the years just before the Depression. It drew huge crowds. Spencer died in 1920. His sons continued to build the business to a total of seven stores and more than 2,000 employees. In 1947, they sold Spencer's to Eaton's of Canada. While the Spencer name no longer shines from the storefront, the legacy of an ambitious young Welshman remains. He came to British Columbia looking for gold and founded an empire 
with a lasting legacy.